Hello everybody and welcome back yet again. Um, so I had a few options to go with uh, for working on next. And I think the one I decided on was Tinker's Construct. I mean, we have this awesome automation system here set up, sifting our dust and our sand or gravel, whatever we decide. And it would be kind of cool to double these ores. I mean, it's not necessary considering that this is pretty well all free, so... It's definitely not necessary, but I think I want to go through it with it anyways, because Tinkers offers a couple of really cool things in ways of tools and items and whatnot. So yeah, I think I'm going to build up a little area. Maybe I'll put the smeltery over here. I think I'll put it over here. But yeah, I'm going to get some mats together, guys. I'll be back in a few. I need to get some clay, basically. I think I've been over how to get clay before. I could show you guys now really quick before I go through collecting all these mats. Let's see. Get some dust stocked up. Ah, we'll keep that on high because I want to stock up some dust. But yeah, same the way we got clay before. Throw it in the barrel, right click it, block of clay. We're going to need quite a bit of clay because the smeltery requires grout and each block of clay gives us eight pieces of grub with sand and gravel. So we got a bit of a stockpile on sand and gravel. I just need to collect some clay. We'll be back shortly. Oh, and before I go over, um, before I go collecting a bunch of clay, I should quickly go over what I changed here. I didn't change anything in terms of the setup. It's all exactly how it was. All exactly how it was, except for I covered everything up with some nice covers from um, microblocks. I just threw some covers around, prettied it up, made a little building. Everything else is exactly the same. I did whitelist, I'm not sure if I showed this all in video last time, but I did whitelist all of these barrels, except for the cobble, because we're not really going to be ever running out of cobble. That's never going to be a problem. And this barrel, or this uh, activator, I did sort out. Just so the round robin item use mode actually is a little bit more effective, I did put a few stacks of each thing I'm waiting for in there. So yeah, that's all I really did here. Everything else is uh, exactly the same. Just thought I'd show that off really quick. Back again, we did collect quite a lot of clay. I think more than enough, but let's find out. Clay, sand, and gravel. There we go. We have four stacks of grout. That was with two stacks of sand, two stacks of clay and one stack, or two stacks of gravel and one stack of clay, excuse me. Now with this grout, oh, we still got quite a bit left over too, which is good, because we will need some clay later on. Throw that in there. Anyways, with this grout, what we are going to do is smelt it, turn it into seared bricks. Let me grab some charcoal. Thought I had charcoal here somewhere. Oh, I think I put it in here. There it is. There we go. Split it up into eights is the way I've always done it. Eight will smelt a stack of whatever you are smelting. Anyways, with this grout, we will turn it into seared bricks, which is the building component for the smeltery. Okay, we'll throw that in there. Everything's good now. Alrighty, and while we're waiting for that to smelt, we can build the basic tinker stuff, I suppose. There's no reason not to. I'll have to build the area when I'm done with this basic stuff. And there's no reason to put that all on camera. I'm just going to build out a little platform there for the smeltery to sit. Maybe I'll connect these two parts, actually. Might be a bit more work than it's worth, but you know what? Gives us a little bit more space to move around on. Okay, let's get moving on the basic tinkers stuff. Tinkers. There we go. There's our basic parts right here. Alright, so at the basic tool station, we're going to need a pattern and a table. Let's just start one thing at a time, I guess. Table and the pattern is formed like so, I think. There we go. Blank pattern. We're going to need a bunch of these, so let me just grab some more sticks. We're going to go through a little bit of patterns. Not, not terribly much, but that should be about okay. 32 should do the trick. Alright, pattern and table gives us our tool station. 
Right, let's go with the part builder next. Ooh, we need a log, hey? <laughs> Are you sure it's a log, or can I go to get away with the plank? I can get away with the plank. Good. There's your stencil table. Pattern chest. It's a regular chest in a pattern. There we go. And what did I not make? Okay, so the part builder does have to be a log, because I made one out of order there. I'll grab one log here. Is that our part builder? That is. Perfect. Now we have all the basics for Tinker Construct, uh, Tinker's Construct. These are basically going to form our tools, and we'll go over how this all works very soon. I think I'm going, going to uh, build out this area now. So we'll be back in a little while, and uh, we'll see what kind of an area I decide on. I think I might just connect these two together, and we'll put the smeltery in there somewhere. We'll be back shortly. And I'm back. So we did build a little bit more out than I thought I would, but like I said, the smelter is pretty dang cool, so I do want to put it up there. I'm kind of a neat place for it. Got mobs spawning up top there. We did burn through quite a bit of our wood, so we do have to farm some more trees sooner or later. Did burn through quite a bit of our wood to lay out this platform. And I did leave this blank spot right for the smeltery. This is where we're going to lay it down. But we can start with our basic... Our basic uh, Tinker's Construct stuff here. Hmm, maybe I want the tool station down here. That could, that might be an okay idea. Yeah, that might be an okay idea. Maybe we'll leave the tool station down here, in this area. So if I'm not mistaken though, as well, a couple of these blocks share this pattern chest, and I'm pretty sure not the stencil table. Is it the tool station? Hold on, I want to move this over one more. Stencil table will go there. Tool station, no, that does not share it. Maybe it is a stencil table, but what would it need to share it for? Yeah, maybe it's only one block that shares the chest. Maybe I'm wrong on that. Part builder, I know, shares the chest because we will need. We will need the stencils. Maybe the tool station will share it when I have. No, I don't think it does share it. I think I'm just totally off base on that. I think it's only one that shares it. So this is going to be our layout for our basic stuff. Do need to get some slabs and throw them under there. I think I'll do that right now. You could probably tell I'm not a fan of super messy builds. Like, I mean, I do have a little bit of mess here and there, but I do like to keep it somewhat organized. Somewhat organized and somewhat decent looking, and I'm happy. It doesn't have to be amazing, like most Minecraft builders can pull off some amazing, crazy, awesome builds, but... This should be good enough, and mobs will definitely spawn here. I throw a torch. That's a little bit of a pet peeve that these torches are going to be uncentered, but for now, it'll do. For now, that one torch up there will do. Okay, so there's our basic stuff laid down. We'll go over all of this very shortly. Let's get our smeltery built up. Our bricks should be done. Yes. Perfecto. Bricks are done. I did bring a crafting station. Yes, I did. Gonna need this. Crafting station, and we'll throw this chest right there. I do like to have a chest nearby when I'm working on this stuff. 
So that should be our little platform for working on our tinker stuff. Good enough. Okay, so let's uh, just open up the tinkers mod because there are quite a bit of different um, different bricks we want. Seared tank, we're gonna need glass, right? Yeah, we're gonna need glass for a couple of these. I hope I remembered to smelt up some glass. So I don't think I have much left because I did use quite a bit of it for those servos. Good, I have lots of glass actually. So first things first, we're gonna want some basic bricks. We'll just shift click that and get all 16. Where'd they go? There they went. And I don't know why, um, a couple of you who know Tinkers pretty well will wonder why I didn't get books here for the other built, uh, these other things I built. And I'm not, I'm not sure why exactly, to be honest. But the good news is you can craft them. Paper in a blank pattern, so we can craft those up later when we need them. We hopped right into the mighty smeltery. Which gives you quite a bit of information about Tinker's Construct. If you're new to it, you should refer to this thing quite often. I'm going to be referring to it as well for things like alloys. And when we get the smeltery controller built, we'll get another book which does uh, offer some more cool information. I'm going to get another bookshelf though, actually. Like the one we built earlier, this guy here. I'm going to get one more of them. Six? Yeah, I need six of these. And three down the middle. This bibliocraft stuff is so simple and so useful. There's some really advanced stuff we're going to be using for enchanting too later on. That'll do. And we'll throw our book right there. Okay, so now that we have our basic bricks, Build the smeltery, you need one lower level. Just like that. And then the rest of them will go around the side. So we're gonna need more bricks. More bricks. I'll throw one more into them, and then I'm going to need one tank for minimum. I do like to get two tanks myself. I might even get more tanks later on, depending on how crazy we use this smeltery. Like I said, we don't need it for ore doubling. We really don't need this to double our ores. Just because we have like an infinite quarry, think of it like that. If you were playing SMP and you had your quarry going, this is basically like an, a slow but infinite quarry at no resource cost. Okay, I'm gonna throw my tanks like so. I think I might wanna notch this out one just so I have access to the controller, which we're going to build next. Uh, where is the controller? Smeltery controller. Just like so. Hmm, I didn't get that book either. I'm not sure why I'm not getting these books. There's our controller. Now when we finish off this, the controller will turn on. But actually... I don't like how I can see through these tanks and see the wood underneath, so I'm going to fix this really quick. A little bit of a waste of two, um, two seared bricks, but that's okay. It'll look nicer. Yeah, that looks nicer. Now when we finish this side off, our controller is online. And how you smelt with this thing is you need lava in these tanks, which, again, in the future, we will automate all of this for right now. We do it by hand. Give me some lava. Throw it in the tank. How much lava do we have in these? I'm not sure. I'll keep going until it's empty. This is probably the last bucket of lava. Hmm. I got more than I thought in that crucible. Wow, that is much more than I thought was in one crucible. I 
Okay, that was the cap. So I think we got six or seven buckets out of that. Let's see, 38 plus... Yeah, we got seven buckets out of that. Okay, so when you build your smeltery, each level of uh, the smeltery will show you how many things you can smelt. So first level, I have nine open spaces. That gives me nine blocks to smelt. The little up and down won't work. I do want to build this up as much as I can. As much as I can. And we are going to use a couple of these pieces of seared glass, or seared glass, because they look cool and you can see through them. So I think we'll get five of them. Get one of these windows. I think the rest will just turn into simple bricks. This should give us quite a few layers to our smeltery. And how do I want to lay out this glass? Maybe like so. Yeah, like so. We'll put this window in the front. Yeah, but like I said, each layer of this smeltery you finish off, you get nine more available uh, inventory. Nine more inventory available to you. So that's pretty damn good for a starting smeltery. Pretty damn good. I've got four layers in there. I do want to cover the top because, yeah, they aren't half slabs. So I'm going to uh, see if I have any stone slabs left over. I'm not sure if I do. <sighs> I forgot about a very important thing. So we're going to need more grout. Okay, guys, I'll be back in a little bit. I need more grout because I did kind of derp a little bit. I forgot I need uh, I need a couple faucets. Not faucets. I need a couple drains. And how much do the drains require? Six bricks for each drain, and I used all my bricks. Okay, so I'll be back. I need some more grout. We'll see you guys shortly. Alrighty, now I'm back again, and it looks like what happened is exactly what I was afraid of. We got mobs spawning on top of the smeltery. But we have some stone smelting away that we're going to make some slabs out of. And that should be more than enough grout for the time being. Let's make some slabage out of those stones. I like the way these stone slabs look. In this texture pack, it's simple. Looks nice. Couldn't ask for more. Okay, let's sleep, because there's a couple creepers over there, and I don't really want more to spawn on top of us. I am going to need... You know what? We'll wait on that. So I'm not sure if we'll do that exactly right now. What I'm thinking of, that is. Okay, so time to battle some creepers. Anything else hanging around in here? It's a spider. We'll let them be, because they'll give us some blood. Yeah, you can get blood out of the smeltery. I don't think I really plan on using it, but uh, you never know. You never know. Let's get our slabs ready to put up here. Alright, spiders. You got yourselves a new home. Until we cook you. Good. Now we're slabbed off. No more mobs will spawn outside of it. If they want to spawn inside, well, they're more than happy to. Okay, so we were going to make those drains. I want two drains to start with. And that might even be more than enough, period. Two drains. I actually want three drains. One more drain. Then we're going to need two faucets. One, two. We are going to need a cast and basin. Where is that guy? Casting basin. We're going to need a lot of these basins, actually. Oh, 
I got a shift click. Give me the table. And whatever else we got left, we'll throw into basins. That was odd. Wanted to <clears throat> put the proper recipe in there. Okay, so here we want one and two. This will be our first basin, and this will be our casting table. I should probably make a stone pickaxe. I just don't want to until mine's worn out. There we go. We want a drain there and a drain there. And then we want our third drain over here. Facing that way should be fine. So I'll expand back this way for the automation section of this smeltery. Good. And now we can throw these faucets here. What the faucets allow you to do is right-click. Like, you can't right-click on any of these, but when you have the faucet there, you can right-click on it. Which will allow you to pour whatever you, smel whatever you smelted out of the smeltery. Okay, good. These are extra basins, but like I said, I'm going to need quite a bit more of them in the future. I think we're going to have to get around to completing this smeltery fully next video. It's going to be a little bit of a long process to getting it all done up. Okay. So now that we're done with that, we need to start... What should we start with? Well, I can start with showing you how this thing doubles your ores right off the bat. Give me... Four iron for demonstration. We'll smelt the whole stack, though. Now here's something I'm curious about. Will you double ores if I put in four separate? I know it'll double if I put in one block, but this I'm curious about. So we're going to let this go through and we'll come back when this is done. See you guys shortly. And we're just about done on the smelting of it. It uses lava to smelt whatever you're putting in. But, uh, yeah. The reason why I'm really wanting this to work is because it's going to avoid me having to do this part by hand. Or using, like, a series of assemblers. It did! It doubled it. Nice. We got two ingots off of four single dust. So we could just simply shift-click this all in there. The downside is, though, it filled up our smeltery with, with singles instead of blocks. If we had blocks, we could fit a lot more in there. That is a downside <clears throat> I'm willing to accept. And uh, yeah, you've probably seen what happened to our spider friends that were hanging out in there. They got smelted and turned into blood. Which blood does have its use. Maybe I should get those books, since for some reason I did not get them when crafting. Okay, these, for one, we could throw the stencils in this table. Um, I do want to move these around really quick. It bugs me having them like this. Part builder, stencil table. Stencil table is usually your first step to developing something, so we'll leave that there. Okay, so what do I need for these books? Because it does bug me I don't have them. A blank pattern, piece of paper. One blank. Do I have a way to make paper, though? Hmm, that's a good question. So I don't think I've grown any sugar cane yet. Paper. I don't think I have a way to make paper right now. That's okay. We can grow some of these sugar cane seeds I think I have right there. For now, I'm just going to put them in the middle of this farm, just to get this on the way. For now, that'll do. We'll get a separate plot for these in a later time. Right now, I'm just kind of wanting to get this to grow. That'll do. Alrighty, guys, I'll be back when I have enough paper. Uh, there's no reason to see me sitting here watering the sugar cane, so I'll be back. 
Alrighty, and I'm back after a little bit of farming and a little bit of pesky inventory management. We have our paper. And I think I know why I didn't get the first book. It's because I did kind of skip ahead and not show you guys the process of doing it to get these micro covers. I did build a um, the tool station just to, or the part builder, excuse me, just to get the tool rods that I needed for a saw. So I think that's probably why I did not get um, I did not get the required materials. All right, so I need one more of these. I think that's how it went. One more of you, and you turn it to you. All right, so now we have all the proper Tinker's books. This is the starting of Tinker's Construct. Basically, all sorts of cool stuff to look at. It tells you about everything, really. Everything you need to know to getting started with Tinker's. We'll throw that there. That one, you really don't reference too much. This one is pretty important to reference. This one tells you all the good stuff about how to make tools, uh, what the different materials do, what the different tools do, like stone bound, um, green forest, all those cool things, jagged. Any others I'm forgetting? I don't think so. I think the other ones are specialty. Specialty stuff, like uh, the emeralds give you 50% more durability, speed upgrades, auto smelting, auto repair, luck, all sorts of awesome stuff that Tinkers gives you. I really like Tinkers for that reason. Let's center this book. That's better. Okay, so let's check on our ores. They should be all smelted down. Nice, they are. So we are going to reference this book. Shift right click to get it out. I'm going to look at alloys really quick. We need aluminum brass. Aluminum brass will let us build casting so we can get our stuff out of the smeltery. Or, actually, I could show you the way we're going to be using it later on, probably in the next video, is we're going to be turning it into blocks, which is much easier to pull out of the smeltery. So you right click it, and when you have the required amount of ingots to form a block, it'll fill the basin. It'll stop filling and slowly but surely form into a block of iron. And that took out nine, blo or nine ingots. So let's fill this guy up with the rest of our iron. Okay, now back to aluminum brass. That was three aluminum, one copper. Okay, copper. Let's go three. Where's my aluminum? Right there. Three and nine should be a decent start to this. And how you form alloys in the smeltery is you just throw them in there. If it makes an alloy, it will smelt and combine in the smeltery. That's, that's a problem for automating this thing, and... That's something we do have to be a little bit careful of. We're not going to go full-blown automation with the smeltery, but if you're throwing in um, like these little pieces of ore that we get out of our sifter, it will form alloys automatically. And I'm not too sure of a way to stop it. We got one more block of iron in here, so let's pour that guy out. Alrighty, there's our block of iron. Cha ching. And what about one more alloy? Mandolin, bronze, copper, and tin. Because I do want to make some tools. And I do kind of want to make it out of a decent material. Like, I obviously can't get the nether ores until magic crops are online, so. I kind of want to get the best durability I can for my tools. And I think that would be bronze. Yeah, I think that would be bronze. So I'm not sure how you get steel without... Well, the only way I've gotten steel is railcraft myself. Not electrical steel, just regular steel. Molten steel. How do I get molten steel? Hmm, this might be something I have to research. 
So there's got to be a way to get steel. Iron ingot for charcoal equals a steel ingot in the induction smelter. Ooh, I see. That's one way to get steel. Okay, so we know of one way to get steel, but that's not right now because we're nowhere near that stage of thermal expansion. Alright, our stuff is all smelted up. And how you get your stuff on the bottom is you simply click it, because what you pour out of the faucets is what's on the bottom. So we want aluminum brass in the bottom. And we're going to make a casting mold out of our ingot here. Right click the ingot on the table, right click the faucet, and it'll pour us a nice casting mold. I think that's pretty well done. We're going to keep the ingot cast in there and we're going to pour out the rest of our iron. Well, we have 14 blocks, so 14 ingots, so we have enough for a block. And the rest we're going to have to shoot out. There we go. And of course this can be automated too, this whole clicking of it. Which will be done soon enough, but not today. Two more ingots left. We'll quickly pour this guy out. So yeah, I think I'm going to go with... Um, with the bronze for now. The bronze has decent durability. It'll do me a good enough job for early game tools. Pig iron is built with blood. You'll, you'll see that in your alloys. In your alloys book, right there's your pig iron. Iron, blood, and emeralds. Okay, so bronze is made from copper and tin. Three to one. Three copper, one tin. Let's go with nine and three again. Nine and three. Copper and tin smelting away. We've barely used any lava. I mean, we've used one bucket of lava. So let's actually make sure this guy's still making lava. And believe me, we will be improving on this single crucible very soon as well. I might even do it next video, because this one single crucible, I'm not happy with it. And I'm not happy with the way it's melting my stone. It's slow, it's silly, it's inefficient. We'll be improving on that. Alright, so how's our iron doing? One more ingot left in there. We've got our block. Good. So we're going to make bronze, and I also do want one piece of obsidian. Oh boy, I need a better way to make obsidian. Thermal expansion will save us. Thermal expansion will definitely save us there. We have a bucket with us? We do. Ah, such a mess in here. Let's turn you off for the time being. Make a piece of obsidian. Pop that up. Thank you. Get our cobble gen back online. You happy? You're happy. Oh, where's my cover? Let's make sure you're on. No! Where will that go? That's anyone's guess where that'll go. I do need that obsidian. Let's see, it'll come in down to probably this chest. Wow, we have a lot built up. It's a crazy amount of crap we've got built up. I might even turn you off. So we do need to process that stuff, and that's a lot we got built up. Alright, so we have our obsidian now. Is our bronze all smelted up? It is. Nice. Bronze is all nice and smelted up. Pull our cast off for now. 
That's kind of why I like this chest close by, because we could store our Tinker stuff in there. Okay, so let's get started on this. Um, where was that book? You see Obsidian gives us reinforced trait, level 3. So I'm going to build a tool rod for my pickaxe. So we're not even going to build an iron pickaxe, we're just going to go straight into a decent pickaxe. Not the best, but decent. So, we gotta start off with a cast. Get our tool rod pattern. And put it in our part builder. Now the nice thing about obsidian is you don't have to smelt it up in the smeltery. For some reason, I guess it makes sense because people did use obsidian to make basic tools. Like the Aztecs. And they pretty well just chipped off shards of it. But, I mean, I am shaping it into a tool rod. That has to require some kind of forging. Maybe. Or maybe I'm crazy. Alright, so we have our tool rod, which will make us our basic pickaxe. Give me that back. Basic pickaxe. Tool rod, we need a binding and a pick head. Well, the pick head, I know we're going to have to smelt one up. So, let's get our pick head pattern. I'm going to throw this into the part builder. And we're going to make it out of stone. The reason why we're making this out of stone is because, you probably guessed it, we're going to make a cast out of it. Make sure our aluminum brass is on the bottom. Let's get that cast going, and I'm going to go sleep really quick. And I really don't need this fence here. I'll have to clean that up a little bit later. Our cast should be done. There we go. And the stone pickaxe head, I can pretty well just throw it into the void. It's garbage. Don't need it, don't want it. Put our bronze in the bottom, let's pour ourselves a bronze pickaxe head. Awesome. Throw this in our tool station. Oh, why does it do that? If you have it in your hand when you click this, it throws it on the ground, which is kind of annoying. We still need one binding. So let's kind of decide what we want to make our binding out of. Give me you. Um, I mean, what other trait can I put on the binding? I guess I could put stone bound on the binding. Which I really don't need. I could make a paper binding. But I mean, this is just a really simple basic pickaxe. You know what I should have done? Uh oh. That could have been a mistake. Let's see, obsidian mining speed 7, handle modifier 0 0.8. So the handle modifier is pretty low. I'm not going to worry about the best binding right now. I'm just going to make it out of whatever, to be completely honest with you. I mean, I already messed up the tool with the obsidian tool rod, but that's okay. I'm not worried about it. We are going to make a stone binding. Just a simple stone binding will do the trick. I'm not worried about the best tool right now. I'm just worried about a good tool. One that does the trick for us. And there's our stone binding. We have a shard left over. I can't put it in the pattern chest for some reason. Alrighty, there's our pickaxe head, our tool rod, and our binding. This gives us a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool pickaxe. Mining speed 7, mining level redstone. And it looks pretty damn cool for a pickaxe. And with this you could put modifiers on it, like I was showing you in the book. You could put mining speed, luck, silk touch, whatever you desire. You can, in fact, put it on that pickaxe. But our pickaxe is so basic that I'm not going to worry too much about making the best pickaxe in the world. Just one that pickaxes stuff pretty decently. Does an okay enough job for me. Awesome. So I hope you guys liked that first little look into what we're going to do with Tinker's Construct. We made a basic tool. We're not going too overboard with what we can do with the tools just yet. 
what I might do in between videos is make myself a couple other tools, smelt up some of this ore, and then I think we're definitely going to get ready to amp up our lava production and we're going to automate the hell out of this smeltery. Uh, I wouldn't go that far, but we're definitely going to automate the smeltery as best we can without mixing up alloys. So we do have to be careful not to mix different metals in there to make alloys. If you are going to smelt your different metals like that to make alloys, you'd probably want to make a separate smeltery. Someone out there who knows more than Tinker uh, knows more about Tinker's construct than me might tell you, no, 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 no. This is how you stop the alloys from forming. I mean, with applied energistics or something, it might be possible to stop alloys from forming, just with simple timings. But other than that, I, I'm not sure of a way to stop alloys from forming. So you'd want a different smeltery for your different metals that form alloys. Which wouldn't be that bad, because I mean, you just make the basic... The basic one level high smeltery and you could hide it underground or somewhere silly where you wouldn't have to see it. So you wouldn't have to see your five different smelteries with your different alloys. But like I said guys, I hope you enjoyed the first little look into Tinkers. Next video, we will definitely be amping up our lava amping up our tinkers a little bit. We're gonna be uh, just automating it a little bit more so it's not such a hassle to keep running back and forth throwing alloys in, having to pour metal out and all that really annoying stuff. So until next time guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. We'll catch you then.